The Utah Science, Technology, and Research Initiative, or USTAR, accelerates the development of ideas into new technologies and products, creating new companies and jobs located throughout Utah. USTAR started in 2006 and was really the vision of the governor at the time. The governor was trying to figure out what he could do to ensure that Utah's growth would be propelled forward and not only that it would move forward in the short term during his tenure as governor, but that it would set the stage for long-term growth that would see Utah being the number one state in the country in terms of the economy. Technology-Based Economic Development, or TBED, is a standard tried and true method of economic development that is not unique to Utah. In fact, Utah is one of 46 states with a TBED program. These are programs like USTAR that are focused on early stage technology development and commercialization. When you think about the role of government, the first and most important thing is, is that they provide a level playing field that's open to everybody having an opportunity to start a business and to grow a business. We're really just trying to balance the field and provide a diverse economic resource for our citizens. And so it, it winds up being more important that we pay attention to our deep technology uh, innovation companies. I think it's very important for Utah to be involved in this technology-based economic development. If everyone else is doing it just to stay baseline, you got to be participating. Utah's never had the mindset of we're going to be average or follow the crowd, especially in technology and economic development. We've always pushed to be a leader in those areas, and I think a lot of the other states are doing it because they've seen what Utah's done and the success that we have. We have to invest. The government has to invest in the future. Um, sometimes you have to plant a lot of seeds to see what will grow, and the government can facilitate that. There's a lot of areas in investment where the private markets will participate, and I'm an investor, I'm an entrepreneur, and I'm a taxpayer. I typically look at most things and say private markets and entrepreneurs will do it better than the government does. But in some of this development in technology, especially deep technology, you know, it could be aerospace, clean tech, biotech, the private markets aren't participating early on. So if a country or a state or a city wants to attract that and sort of start building the ecosystem, they're going to have to invest in order to bring that in. And once it's built up, then there's momentum. But the private markets usually won't get involved until that early investments there in the ecosystems there. USTAR programs are strategically designed to address market failures and barriers to establishing deep technology in Utah. USTAR's programs are designed to help de-risk new innovations, to make them more appealing to private investment down the road. There's some certain things that private support just can't provide. If you're building something, if you're trying to do something from physics or chemistry, if you're doing something for like an internet startup, you know, maybe you don't need quite as much support, but for some of these harder technology companies, there's some resources that you need access to. You know, most companies can't afford a million dollar piece of equipment that they're going to use for three weeks of their research. The type of equipment that's available at USTAR is not uh, easily available to a small company like us. That equipment, water jet cutters, laser cutters, general machine shop uh, capability for that matter uh, is very expensive from a capital standpoint and small companies need to conserve as much capital as possible. When you look at the innovation cycle, it's not always in six months. It's not like developing a computer game that you can do in nine months and then you can go out and make a billion dollars on it. You know, that's part of the cycle, but that's not the only cycle. Some of the cycle is you have to develop, you have to do the research to develop the technology that then has to be taken and commercialized into a new business. We've been fortunate with Silicon Slopes that, uh, uh, that we've attracted businesses in the areas of software and services that have been instant successes and are growing like crazy. But they're also, if you will, deep technology innovators that also need to be attracted to our state. You might say, well, the venture capital guys will take care of that. Well, about 90% of venture capital in our state over the last five years has gone to uh, software and, and service businesses. Very little actually gets into some of the deep technologies that are so essential to our long-term growth. And these technologies typically take a long time to generate the kinds of returns that venture capitalists often want. And that's, of course, where you start 
fits in. My company is new enough that VC funding is not a viable option. And so I needed some preliminary data and I needed some, some support to gain that. And then at the end of it, I likely will be attracted to angels and VC firms so that I can move to the next phase of, of development. The state has to be involved because some of this funding needs to come from them to prime the pump. Private capital is limited for deep tech startups. It's even more scarce at the early technology development stages, like those supported by USTAR. In 2017, nearly $55 million in seed deals were closed in Utah, but only 7% went to vital sectors targeted by USTAR. There's a huge gap in deep technology, and I think it's mainly because there's so many years between investment and any sort of return that it's hard for an investor. You think of most investment funds, they have a 10-year life, but the reality is they're trying to invest the money in three to five years and be out by eight years into the fund. The technology economy is key to weathering economic recessions and downturns. As Utah's technology sector becomes a larger part of our economy, we also need to ensure that we have diversity within the technology sector. If you don't fund research, and this is research that can be commercialized, you're not going to come up with the technologies you need that, we're, that will give birth to new industries, that will be give birth to, to new companies that will create the jobs and the tax revenue to keep the economy forward and that will bring the venture capitalists to Utah to invest in these companies. In a recent study by the Milken Institute, Utah fell from the top spot to 13th in the Technology Concentration and Dynamism Index, which measures the diversity of our technology economy. Our dramatic decline can be attributed to a relative growth in silicon slopes compared to more modest growth in other deep tech sectors in the state, which is why strategic government support of the deep tech sectors is critical. So there's a few important reasons why a state or Utah should, should invest in some of those different sectors. One is diversification. Any of us in our 401k or any investments we make in our life, we want to be diversified. If you look at the last two crashes, a lot of them were around IT and software-based technologies or web-based technologies in the uh, early 2000s, late 90s. And if that's all that's in your economy, then your whole, whole economy goes down. Our families need choices with respect to where to work, and having a science and technology segment makes those choices broader. I think when a state or a government, they're about the only entity that can have true long-term strategy. So if you're going to get involved in economic development like this, you have to get in and stay in for the long haul. I think that's where having some government involvement in this space is important because they can take that long-term perspective because they don't have to have the return on investment in 12 months. They can look at a 30 or 50 year you know, horizon of building the economy. Well, USTAR is funding research that can create jobs and industries and increase our economic competitiveness. And if you don't encourage innovation, your economy, I think, is going to die. To sustain our state's deep science and technology sectors, we must invest in an innovation ecosystem. Or rather, we must build the necessary infrastructure to support long-term growth. Similar to building a new freeway, expanding our innovation infrastructure creates new opportunities, connects workers to their jobs, and increases quality of life. Utah needs reliable infrastructure, like an airport, to connect supply chains and move goods and services. The same economic logic applies to USTAR and our innovation infrastructure. We need strategic, long-term investment to build a healthy economy. The infrastructure in place is important. I think the infrastructure attracts dollars but it also attracts the people. A good scientist or technologist is gonna to come to a location because the type of equipment and uh, infrastructure they need is already there. Utah is known as one of these very innovative, very entrepreneurial-minded states. And a lot of people are moving to Utah for that reason because it has that atmosphere, that drive. For me, it's been absolutely instrumental and pivotal. We would not be where we are. My company, would still be sitting on a shelf in my garage if I did not have the support from USTAR. USTAR builds Utah's innovation infrastructure, 
connecting entrepreneurs to capital, technical expertise, and equipment. It's supplying support to meet the needs of Utah's deep science and technology sectors, and in the process, drives our state forward. A lot of states have organizations that provide you know, support to small businesses, but uh, Ustar's a little different, and, uh, and I think a little bit better, because having the, the technical expertise to be able to, to kind of sift through the good ideas from the bad ideas, because you know, they're, they're out there, but having people who are able to do that is really valuable, because then you're able to place your investments uh, much more strategically, and, and put them in, in places that are going to bear the most fruit. I think Utah's at a flexion point in its existence, and we have got to look to the future, we've got to be visionary, and we've got to invest, and that's uncomfortable, and it takes political capital, and it takes will. As you think about the growth of USTAR, it's changed as our economies change. It's grown as the research grows. And USTAR is a reasonable and small investment, but the fact that we're doing it here, it, there's a halo effect, and the whole state is saying, we can do this. U-Star is a good buy for Utah because it continues to attract companies' economic growth. I was skeptical when I started on the governing authority and as I came on was sort of asked to be skeptical, you know, make sure that we're getting the returns that, that we look at. And I think investment returns is sort of the wrong metric to look at. You want to look at kind of how the companies have done, but there's a lot of other forms of economic return that I'm seeing and learning, you know. The, how much follow-on capital is coming in because they've de-risked those investments and you know in some of the numbers it's four, five, ten x the investment comes in comes in another capital that's a really good return and metric to look at I think overall just because of the growth in other capital um, employment growth all those things would would make you know investing in Ustar a good decision so it all goes back to 12 years where we had a governor and we had a legislature that said, this makes sense. And it's an economic development tool that has paid off. And I thank the legislature today. I thank the governor today because they continue to see the vision. And I hope they will continue to fund it going forward. As Utah's technology catalyst, Ustar grows and diversifies our state's economy, growing and creating companies whose products have global impact. Together, we are catalyzing innovative, dynamic economic growth throughout Utah.